So to get started, I have my card, my card envelope, some white cardstock, my clear stamps of choice. Today I'm going with spring, specifically chilling with my peeps, and some Excel Mark black ink. Here I'm just going in with my little eggs in my nest, and a little bit more. There we go. All right, so this is gonna be my first embellishment. Next, I'm gonna put on my little chick with glasses. I don't want my stamps to be immediately next to one another because I'm gonna be cutting out and coloring them, so I wanna avoid any overlap. To add some additional color and character to our stamps here, I am going to go in and color them. Now, my preference has always been markers. I use an alcohol-based marker. These are Prismacolor. However, if you have Crayolas or your own crafting, that will work just fine. In addition, I have some other skin tone and lighter pastel markers um, here. These are my Blick Studio markers um, and they work just as good. The best advice I have to start is always test out your marker on the paper so you get an idea of what you're working with. So this is actually quite darker than the label says. So with that in mind, all right, now I know what I'm working with. I'm gonna start with my little Harry Potter chick friend, and I'm going to just start filling him in. I find that brush markers work the best, they give you the most control, and honestly, they blend so much better. If you don't have brush markers though, that's okay. You might just have to put in an extra amount of work to really get some smooth saturation. Working with markers as well is best on thicker paper. And what I mean by that is what I'm working with right now is cardstock. Cardstock is a great crafting paper that absorbs ink, pigments, and eh, maybe some watercolors, not so bad. Here, the paper is nicely absorbing the pigment. It's not bleeding. It's not creating really wet, damp, or dark spots. And the coverage is pretty good. The whole point of this lightest canary yellow color is what artists call their base color. The base color is what the actual object, or in this case, an animal, looks like. To give our animals some more definition, I'm going in with this next color, Spanish Orange. And again, using the brush, give it a little test run, looks pretty good. I can shade some darker areas. So right off the bat, this is easy because this wing is up and behind our little chick. So it's gonna be a little darker in shadow. I can also add some additional shadowing on the tail. And to do that, if you need practice, it's a quick flick. Notice I'm not smushing the marker down because what happens is it ruins the felt and it also just creates this gross blob. For nice, smooth, easy shading, think light and quick. I'm not dragging up really slow because that's how you get uneven, wobbly lines. So again, just going quickly, putting more pressure when I start and then lifting up. I can even kind of add like some little feathery, furry details to give my little chick some character, some dimension and just make sure he's not super flat. 
this is where you can start to go over your layering. You might be thinking, whoa, that looks really blotchy, really not nice. You can go back over with that base color and start to blend again. And those are just going to mix together and blend out any rough edges. My last color here is called Goldenrod. And it's actually quite dark brown, so I'm gonna use this a little bit more sparingly on the wing and maybe to define some more feathers or where any darkness would be on my little chick. All right. In addition, I do have a double-sided marker, so this side is nice and fine. It's quite um, easy to use very to the point, and I can get a nice little orange saturation on his beak. The last little details on my chick are going to be some really light blue glasses. His glasses look lost. It doesn't really look like he's wearing them anymore, so I can go in. This is actually light cerulean blue. I'm gonna go in. In this way, he looks like he's actually wearing his glasses now. This is my favorite part of the process. This is a Jelly Roll white gel pen. And these are really fun because they just give that extra pop, really cute, cartoony um, effect to your colored stamps. And to see what I mean, you can just kind of give it a roll, kind of wake the pen up. And with this pen, I think I'm gonna do some reflection lines on my chick's glasses. And maybe some little highlights on his wings. And some little highlights on his head. And maybe down his tummy. That way, it just looks fully complete, refined and polished. All right. Now I have cut out all of my colored stamps. You can just go in with a scissors or an X-Acto knife or stay tuned for another video upcoming how you can get a nice die cut effect. Moving forward though, I have a 5x7 white card and I'm going to go with a pretty cute pink theme for my chicks. All right, to attach your paper to the card, I always use a tape glue runner. It's less messy, it's easy, and it gets the job done. You can flip this over so you're on your smooth side. This is the part where you get to get creative and have your own interpretation of a card. All right, so what I was doing here is just placing everything so that I can see how it's looking. This is much easier than taking your glue, gluing it all down, and then taking a step back and realizing, oh, I don't like that at all. So always just place your things first. This is just the best way to get a sense of what you want to do. So I know I want this placement. So to start with that, I'm going to glue this first uh, gingham pattern onto the card. Take my tape roller. And then again, just use your best eyeball. Mm 
and push down. I'm gonna go again with that little tracing we did. This is a quick and easy way to get custom um, backings for your stamps. With my phrase, I want it to pop out of the picture a little bit more. So what I have are actually some 3D little styrofoam. Um, they kind of remind me of little feet that raise up the paper so it gives it a more shadowy 3D effect. And I can just flip this guy over. If you're really dexterous, you can just pop them out with your finger. Or if you're like me and you're having a bit harder time, you can get just a little tweezers and just punch them out. You don't want to totally crush the paper because it's really going to smush it and pancake it down. With this way, it's light, it's up, and it's good to go. All right, I'm going to do my little hen. I think I'm actually going to do the same with the eggs to give it that pop-out effect so it looks like she's actually kind of on them. Makes it a little bit more playful. I think I'm going to do the babies just flat. What I really like to do at the end of any card making is to add some embellishments. Here I just have some tiny pearlescent uh, little gems that you can add onto your card for that final touch. All right, and just like that, I think I'm satisfied with my card. Now, of course, this is for you to have artistic expression with, so if you want to add more embellishments, more stamping, maybe you want to go back in with a white pen or a Sharpie and add some additional details, all the power to you. But for now, this is a nice card that I could send to a loved one and show my appreciation for them. Thanks for watching.